Hello, Namaste. We have discussed about many rotis and parathas like puri and batura before. But now uh, I'm going to show you a very special recipe that my mother used to make when I was growing up as a child in Calcutta. And uh, that was like a round Mughlai paratha and she used to serve it with this chicken and meat korma. And it was just marvelous. I can't even get over the taste. Sometimes I think in my mouth waters. I'm trying to go close to it, but I know I won't reach uh, what she's doing. Now here uh, is two cups of all-purpose flour or maida. I've added in this about one and a half teaspoons of salt. So I need salt. I'm going to, you can use one fourth of a cup of ghee or it can be two tablespoons of ghee that's clarified butter and two tablespoons of oil, teaspoon of sugar which is optional and this is a pure saffron that is dissolved in some warm milk, good quality saffron and a little bit of oil to um, with water. Now maybe I would need a fourth of a cup to make my mixture. So first I've added already one and a half teaspoons of salt. Now I'm going to add in this about two tablespoons of the ghee. I would like to eat healthy so I'm going to mix it with some, you can use olive oil. I always use olive oil but you can mix it with some vegetable oil. Salt has already been added little bit of sugar maybe like a teaspoon of sugar should be there and um, not too much just for a little bit of flavoring and essence fourth of a teaspoon of oops this doesn't come out the saffron that I have in hand because we don't want the color to be saffron dissolved in some water and uh, this is specially prepared. Um, this dish particularly is prepared on special occasions. I mean, when you're calling over people for lunches and dinners. And uh, we normally add a little bit of water at a time in order to mix everything up. Uh, but not too much water, as I said little by little fourth of a cup so you just knead the dough in this manner very little we don't want it to be too hard at the same time we don't want the dough to be too soft so this is called paratha I'm making like a moglai paratha with saffron If you want to add any bit more or less of this ingredients, you always have the liberty to do so. Uh, you can add an egg in this just for some extra flavoring but today I am not adding egg. Normally in Calcutta in our parathas, they do add some extra egg. I am just going to add maybe a teaspoon more of oil. To combine everything together so this is the process that we go to knead the dough you take this part of your fingers you can drench it in some oil and just go round like this again you take it and uh, I try not to wear rings and bracelets when I work because it's always you know comes in the food just also you can take a little bit of water in your fingers and go in this manner and knead it tight the dough should be not too hard so I kept applying a little bit of oil in the palm of my hand take everything round ok 
in this manner. So friends, my dough has been sitting for 15 to 20 minutes. So now I'm going to, I just shaped it like a pera or a round ball like this. And you want to ensure that the dough is nice and soft. And uh, it needs to be like round shaped like this. And then you press it gently. Then you drench it in some flour, whatever flour that you have on hand. It can be all purpose flour. And also you dust the board and your rolling pin. And go round in this manner. The edges have to move round. We don't want too much flour on the parathas because it will be too dusty with the excess that I want to do now. And you can just go in this round fashion. try to press in the front my hand is moving round at this point you can take the help of this rolling pin that I normally use for my pizzas or Italian food and just press and roll it nice and big you can see that the parathas should be shaped in this inch diameter not too fat not too thin now I have my non-stick tawa heating over here I'm also going to make a chicken roll with that today so this was some leftover chicken that I made from last night I'm going to heat the tawai which gets hot very soon. Now as my tawai is hot, gets hot, I'm going to dust off any excess flour so that the flour doesn't come on the bread and I'm going to put it in the paratha on the tawa so once it puffs up a little on one side I'm going to turn it on the other side the heat is on medium high I'm going to start putting in my oil or ghee clarified butter if that's what you desire if you want to make it rich for guests and just go around the edges press it gently around the edges the heat should not be too high so we have to keep adjusting on medium high in my gas it is 7 or 8 and these can be served with a chicken korma, mutton korma, vegetarian dishes for those who are vegetarian. I mean there are thousands of things that you can do with these. And then you turn it on the other side. And 
apply a little bit of oil and ghee and then just remove it onto a foil and they can be saved for two to three days as well. I'm just going to put it in a foil so that I'll make a bunch and then use it for one or two more days. So after the first one is done, I take out the dough and as I said it should be a medium size like this. I go round with my hands and the dough needs to be soft so I keep kneading it around like this and then I go in this round shape press it down with the palm of the hand press it in the flour and just go round with the palm of the hand and then I start to knead it very fast cooking is all about for me it's always been about sharing with family and it brings a sense of belongingness, get-togetherness. It's a very good way of socializing. Plus, I love to share my secret recipes of my family with everyone. And uh, do subscribe on YouTube at Choreography Pia. So we want to dust off any excess flour and you want to ensure at this point of time that the tawa or the non-stick pan should be on high heat. Because if it is not high, the parathas are not going to puff up. So we have to ensure that the edges of the parathas must be rolled up thin. They have to be nice and round and spread out to the edges. You can do take the rolling pin and use the help to roll them to a desired um, to a desired size of your liking. And then you put the pan on high, on medium high heat. And then you strain off the excess. Put it in the pan. And then just... So there are different ways of making the paratha. We can roll it up like lachha paratha. I'm putting on video on that. Like roll it like a napkin. It can be made into a round shape like this. It can be made a square shape. So there are different hundred variations of how one would make parathas. And uh, I'm going to post it all on my channel at YouTube at Choreography Pia. So when one side after two minutes was a little bit brown and the edges start puffing up a little, I flip it on to the other side and leave it for two minutes on this side. But I don't put the oil until and unless the paratha puffs up a little to a certain desired way. 
so maybe two minutes per side as you do it you know how you will be doing it so you can press the ends very gently like this and then you turn the side press it very gently and this is a non-stick tawa so it makes life much easier and then you can take a little bit more of the oil and paratha needs about two to three tablespoons of oil for it to puff up on per side and it needs to be well done otherwise it will be very um, raw I mean the flavors have to be well cooked we don't want uncooked food here and uh, just uh, go round like this as you can see round and round shape not too much oil but at the same time it needs to be well prepared as I said you can roll it up in foils and preserve it that's a large foil but I guess I need it for all my parathas and then press the ends with a spoon and then take it down. 